Hello Capsulea, my name is Gildy and welcome to EVE Online. Insurgencies, Deathless, Gristas and Angel Cartel bringing chaos to the front lines. All big words that announced one of the previous expansions to EVE Online. But what does that mean for you, a lone Capsulea that wants to explore this content and see if there is some isk to be made there? The quick answer is yes, there can be a lot of fun and isk involved in this content. The long answer will be the rest of this video. Why am I talking about this and what experience might I, Exploration Kerber, have in this predominantly PvP content? I am a member of Astral Acquisitions Inc, corporation which, after Insurgencies got introduced, was the first to put a scratch on the uncontested streak of pirate victories being the first ones to suppress one of our home systems to level 5 and securing it from going lawless. During that and later defenses, we've learned a bit here and there, so I will try to cover all of the mechanics, helping you be more prepared if you decide to give this content a go. This expansion is supposed to, in a way, reinvigorate the factional warfare space, adding pirate faction to the mix of each of the front lines, changing the dynamic of two empires fighting each other and making this a war triangle with pirates dropping into random factional warfare low sex systems and fighting both sides, corrupting star systems and making them go lawless. Should they succeed and win the insurgency, they will take over a system where their forward operating base spawned for a day and make that system vulnerable. This in turn makes it easier for the empire that didn't own it before take it, creating potential holes in front lines. Capsuleers have varied opinions on success of this expansion, but I will be sharing my opinion in a later video. Pirates drop into their insurgencies by having a forward operating base spawn in a random system with a life-sustaining planet. In the past, this was completely random, which was problematic because there was a quite high chance, at least on the Kalmil Galmil front line, that the FOB will spawn deep into Kaldari space, their rearguard systems. This made for a complete lack of interest from Kaldari militia, who would just ignore the insurgency and once it was done, secure the vulnerable system right away. Now there is a slightly higher chance that the FOB will stick closer to frontline systems, making it more interesting putting higher stakes at current frontline that can have a new hole poked in it if pirates are not dealt with. So, to participate in this tug of war, or rather a race to the finish, both sides compete over the infected systems. First side reaching their limit of captured systems, which is 7 by default, wins. However, each time one side wins, they get either plus one system to win over next time, or if their enemy faction had over 7 systems to capture, they will have one less system to run next time. This is called an Ambition modifier and was introduced a little bit later into the Havoc expansion. You can see that represented on the screen right now. The Angel Cartel now needs 17 systems to win. If they win, they will need another one, making that 18. The maximum that would need to be captured is 20, which is when the Ambition modifier caps out. If they lose, they will need 16 during the next insurgency, while the militias still need just 7 systems. Then, if you zoom in, each system is part of a smaller campaign. Militias and pirates fight over same sites, which are separate from the regular factional warfare ones. They all come in in Advanced 1 or Advanced 5 flavor, so any type or level of ship can jump into them, there is no restriction for pirate or tech 2 or 3 ships entering. Each side also has their own progress bar in the system they are fighting in, and if pirates hit their 100% first, the system goes lawless. I will cover the consequences of systems going lawless a little bit later. This, in theory, does not block the empires to still gain their 100% in a system and also count it towards their win. If empires get their 100% first, Pirate can only reach stage 4, blocking them from getting 100% in their system. To reach each of the levels of corruption or suppression, each side of the conflict needs to reach the following suppression or corruption levels. 10% for stage 1, 20% for stage 2, 40% for stage 3, 70% for stage 4, and 100% for stage 5. Of course, 
progressing through the suppression and corruption triggers different effects on the system separate for each side of the conflict. For pirates, reaching stages of corruption will result in the following effects. Stage 1, pirate PvP loot drops go up to 7.5% total bonus. Faction navy and criminal police NPCs don't spawn in high sec, so people with low security status won't get chased. Stage 2, pirate PvP loot drop bonus increased to 15%, roaming pirates spawn in systems, and they will attack people without pirate faction standings even if you are not enlisted in Empire Factional Warfare. They can have special named rats in the waves that have a chance of dropping an item that Empire militias can exchange in their headquarters systems for loot cans. The waves get bigger with each subsequent corruption stage. Stage 3, Pirate PvP loot drop bonus increases to 22.5%. This stage is crucial for the insurgency mechanic as the moment systems hit stage 3 corruption, the corruption will either spread to a neighboring system that is next to the corrupted one, or if it's not possible, to any system neighboring the insurgency. Stage 4, pirate PvP loot drop bonus increases to 30%. All players who are in pirate militia gain a plus 2 AU per second warp speed bonus. And stage 5, Pirate PvP loot drop bonus increases to 37.5%. And then sentry guns in low sec will no longer respond to players who get a suspect timer in the presence and will ignore all criminal timers in their presence. Players can now use interdiction spear launchers, warp disruption field generators, bomb launchers and defender launchers. This turns it into technically null sec. High sec on the other hand becomes low sec because attacking ships, structures and drones is now possible without a criminal timer and Concord response. Concord will only respond to capsule kills or assisting someone with a criminal timer in the system, which also means assisting someone that has a limited engagement timer on, which is kind of weird. Attacking people in lawless high sec will trigger kill rights the moment you aggress someone who is not a suspect, meaning that this mechanic stays the same as it is in regular high sec. Systems affected by the stage 5 of corruption are displayed with an upside down triangle and are given a lawless label in the route overview. This, especially for high sec corporations that lived around factional warfare space for years, can be dangerous as some pirates have a real liking to burning down high sec and lawless high sec allows them to bash stations without having to go through any war deck mechanics. On the other side, we have the Empire Militias and their bonuses. Stage 1. Increased bounties from NPCs and security status gains up to 5% of total bonus. I kind of do not understand this one, as the pirate rats you shoot during insurgencies have no bounties and I don't think anyone enlists to go ratting. Stage 2. Bounties and security status bonus up to 10%. Increased Empire Factional Warfare Militia gains from running sites by 5%. This compensates for, at least for now, Pirate LP being worth more because you get more and more Empire Militia LP for the same sites with each stage you reach. Stage 3. Bounty and security status bonus up to 15%. Increased Empire Factional Warfare Militia gains from running sites by 10%. Corruption gains for the system are reduced by 30%, which is a big one at slowing down pirates. Roman Enforcer spawns will start to appear and warp around the system. These NPCs will engage anyone who is enlisted with pirates, but will be neutral to other pilots. They, just like pirate rats, will have special named ones that drop loot, which pirates can exchange in the laundering facility. This is an anomaly spawning together with the FOB in the FOB system. Stage 4, bounty and security status bonus up to 20%. Increased Empire Factional Warfare Militia gains from running sites by 15%. All players who are in Empire Militia gain 10% bonus to the range of Stasis Webifier and Warp Scramblers. Stage 5, Bounty and Security Status Bonus up to 25%, Increased Empire Factional Warfare Militia gains from running sites by 20%, Elite Sentry Guns will be deployed by the Roman Enforcer NPCs. These Sentry Guns are vastly more powerful than the regular Sentry Guns, 
including ECM and target painting effects, in addition to vastly increased damage per second. The sentry guns are also immune to the sentry gun disabling effects from Corruption 5. And also, as I said before, this stage stops solar systems from progressing or gaining corruption after Corruption Level 4. As I mentioned, End of Insurgency happens when one of the sides gets their target number of systems to 100%. This is not the whole mechanic though, because first of all, Empire militias will have to, once they reach their target level, bash the fob, destroy its shields, and then after a timer, come back to break the armor and hull. Pirates need to only finish their systems up, and it immediately announces their win. If the insurgency goes on for too long, which is around 2 weeks, a draw is announced and this spawning starts. The moment a result of an insurgency is announced, both sides receive extra isk, depending on the contribution, however, the payout is not massive and you get it only if you did not retire from the factional warfare during the insurgency. If you retire, all of your progress is lost, even if you re-enlist. Insurgency does not disappear immediately. It will linger in the systems for the next 24 hours since a result was announced, which means that lawless systems stay with that status for longer. To be completely safe, give it 24 hours and then wait till the next downtime, as there were reports that in LOSEC, even after notifications of insurgency were gone, people were still able to drop bubbles on gates, making it an unannounced nullsec inside of LOSEC. As I mentioned previously, you can get extra loot apart from just LP and loot from PvP fights you get into during Insurgency. On Empire side, destroying special named pirate rats has them drop data sequences. You can now see me exchanging those in Onamon. In order to do it, you need to have large collidable objects on your overview, warp to the facility and exchange sequences for loot boxes. You do not need to be enlisted to exchange those, and the loot you get from those varies from faction ammo, through BPCs of faction ships, to multiplasmids for Vorton projectors. Decayed ones being super cheap, going for around 187,000 isk at the time of this recording, while the gravid ones go for 46 million isk. In the next video in this series, I will go over the most common types of sites you will encounter, what do you need to do to complete them, how much do they contribute to the insurgency progress and how much do they pay out. Next, if I don't fit everything into that video due to time constraints, I will also make another one where I will talk a bit about the pain points and issues of this expansion, hopefully being able to present it from the side of pirates as well. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a corp mate that might need it, leave a like and subscribe to see my future uploads. If you are interested in what I will talk about next, my videos go up every Sunday. And if we never see each other in space again, Capsulia, fly safe.